So now you're back. Uh, you're so starting now I'm back. a new life. What had you thought at that point? What you're going to do now when you're here? Now I've gone home. It's been a long time since I was. Uh, you know, my brothers have grown up. You know, they're now twenty and uh, eighteen. They're used to being the guys in the house, and here I am. I've come back, and I want to play big brother. So we are having a lot of tussles between us. Mm. Yeah, my father has become a pastor at a local church uh, in Eldoret, so I'm going to church. And when I go to church, the you know the church is really judging me. You know, I'm that guy who was deported. Everyone is whispering about it and pointing and blah blah blah. You make any friends, they tell them, hey, stay away from that guy. He's bad company. You talk to any girls, their mothers call them. Mm. You know. And uh, you begin to feel the, um, the heaviness of rejection. You know, the estate is against you. People are saying, you know, Juliana Majuna, you came back with nothing. I mean, what can you tell us? You have no voice. The same argument is also used in, in your home, even in arguments, eh? you know. It's a constant reminder and a blemish. Would you believe, even up to date, even up to date, even as late as last year, there was an argument in my family and someone said, but you went to America and you came back with nothing. It's, it's a job. Always it's a job, mm. you know. It's, it's one, like one line they run to. It's like leprosy, you know. Mm. You, can, you can't just escape it. So, um, so what do you do? You become depressed. So you went through a point of depression. Sure. Yeah, and then you get into alcoholism. And then you start drinking and drinking and drinking until you get to a point where you're drinking even changa. Mm. And you just want to die because your life is... Had you thought of... Uh, it's gone, you know. Ending it. Yeah, several times I thought of ending it. Uh, but you know me, because of being brought up again in a Christian home, one of my biggest worries and I think uh, the biggest determinant is the healthy fear of the devil and hell. Mm. So I would always ask myself, so if I kill myself, where am I going? If I had an assurance that maybe I wouldn't go to hell, maybe we would not be speaking here today, mm. you know. But because I didn't have such an assurance, I would get scared. So what I would try to do is drink as much as I could so that I can numb that thought, mm. so that I can do the act. Without the thought. Yeah. But I was never able to numb it with alcohol. How long did you that face last? It lasted a long time. More than a year? Oh, from 2004 to 2011. It's a long time. It's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, I've had friends who've come back, so many of them. Mm. Uh, quite a number, not with us today. So it's, a, it's not a good place to be. Huh? In between, I, I managed to work at several places, mm. but still the nagging feeling was always there with me. Eh? And I tried to get out of the house, and then I'm looking at the money I'm making, and I'm thinking I used to make more money than this. You know, I'm constantly living in my past. Because mm. of acceptance. And the, what could have been. And so between the period of 2009, because in, two, in 2007, I got a job that kind of stabilized me. I was working with uh, Ruben Kigame then, mm. at, um, in 2006 actually, at Fish FM. He was starting, he started a radio station. So he put me on radio and that was my first real uh, media, media thing. And for a while, although that wasn't paying much money, it was one of the happiest things in my life. And then later on in early 2008, I got a job with an NGO, mm. an international NGO in Eldoret. These guys used to be in the States, they were doing a children's charity over here, they were well funded and stuff like that, and they gave me a very good position as well. So somehow my life turned, yeah? And then in 2009, my sister died. The sister I had left in America. So she was still you know, in America? She was still in America all that time. In 2009? Yes. So during this uh, phase where you're going through the... You're not sure, I think the rejection by people, the constant... Uh, Pointing of fingers of you being a failure. I feel like that was the main issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How were you dealing with it in the sense of, was it just alcoholism or were there other ways you were dealing with it? Uh, it's probably just alcoholism. There was really nothing else. There was nothing else. I wasn't seeing anyone, having a short chat with any counselor, nothing, nothing like that. It was just, you know, I just became this guy who zoned out into his own thing. Mm. You know, and I think that happens to a lot of people because even now you if you think about what would you, you have done because um, what would you advise like your old self at that point because accepting the fact that you've come back because i feel like your parents were a little bit welcoming they were not as my parents were welcoming mm. at first mm. um 
but you know parenting is different eh? my mother was always sympathetic moms are always like that you know thank god for moms mm. my dad was very rough eventually you know especially when my things were not really working out after i'd come mm. back because eh? he wanted me to come back and go to school like immediately eh? mm. did you go try, out to school try and recoup you know those years uh, some, i didn't want to initially you know i didn't want to do anything you know i was still numb from that thought and you know how you have um uh you're having some sort of you know uh traumatic stress yourself you need to actually uh what's it called you need to be able to release yourself of this thing 